All right, we are back with a little something we like to call first and football. Yes. That looks like Dak Prescott surprised the ball wasn't intercepted there. But uh, <laughs> Dak said yesterday DNA. that back-to-back 12-win season shows the Cowboys are moving in the right direction. And here's Dak talking about building off those uh, consecutive uh, solid regular seasons. Well, I mean, look, uh, he, number one, he's got to stay healthy, obviously. Number two, yeah, they did have a good year. They did yeah. win a road playoff game, so let's not discount that. And then they kind of you know, came up short uh, because he threw that pick, which he did all year long against San Francisco. Uh, the Cowboys are good. No one's going to say they're not a good team, but no one's yeah. also going to say that they're as good as San Francisco or Philadelphia. So... Are they playing for second place in the NFC East? Absolutely. Probably, right? Absolutely. They are a good team, but 2-12 win season, it sounds more like a plateau to me than building. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I, they have no Zeke or Elliott this year. I just believe that the Dallas Cowboys need more offense than Michael Gallup, Brandon Cooks, uh, C.D. Lamb, and Tony Pollard. They need more offense than that if, if they want to continue to compete in the NFC. Uh, defense is stout. Yes. Everybody knows that, but... One thing I do know, I played for Brian Schottenheim when he was offensive coordinator here with the Jets. Yep. I don't think that he's a better. I don't, I don't think. I don't think that he's the best fit for Dak. I, I think that Kellen Moore is a better offensive coordinator. Than and Brian it seems like Kellen Moore became a bit of a scapegoat for the offense, right. where it's everyone like was saying that McCarthy Kellen's problem was just, that he was too aggressive yeah. with Dak. What do you yeah, think about it that? Was like McCarthy just threw. Kellen Moore under the bus and ran over him, boom, boom, and <laughs> yeah. then sent him out the point. door and made him a scapegoat for, for, for everything that happened in Dallas, and that's not the truth. Well, listen, Kellen Moore's in L.A. now with uh, Justin Herbert and the Chargers. Mm-hmm. McCarthy's calling the place. He did it successfully in Green Bay. Right. Uh, but I'm with you. If you win 12 and then you win 12 again, but, you didn't get better. You stayed the same. Mm-hmm. But I don't think they win 12 games this year. I really don't. Really? They stole a game in Philly last year, which nobody expected them to win. Right. They swept the Giants. I don't believe that uh, they're going to sweep the Giants this year, and I believe that the Eagles will sweep them. Right. So just there alone, uh, the best they could do is second, maybe even third place right. in the NFC. And I know for them, as Jerry Jones, you know, like any man getting older now yeah. in, the, in his 80s, you know, the time to win is now. If that guy's ever going to enjoy uh, watching his franchise win another Super Bowl, so that's a very interesting take uh, by Plax. Let's go to second of football. I don't know how this keeps coming up, but it's about my Jets. So sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I cannot wait until the season starts. Please. Oh, man, when they lose that first game to the Please. Bills. Nathaniel Hackett, of course, the Jets' offensive <laughs> coordinator, the impetus to get Aaron Rodgers to come from Green Bay to New York. Uh, you can read it there. It's going to be some freedom with Aaron. You got to take advantage of a guy like Aaron. He's so smart. He understands the offense, <sighs> trying to build this thing for him to put us in the best position possible. I mean, on and on and on. She kept on because that's exactly how Nathaniel Hackett got the gig, right, to go get uh, Aaron Rodgers. Listen, if I'm Nathaniel Hackett, he goes as, as Aaron Rodgers. Damn goes. right. Listen, Aaron Rodgers is basically a coach under center. Nathaniel Hackett is going to call the plays in, and when Aaron Rodgers is on the center, he has the, the intelligence to put that offense in, in a better play based on the coverage that he's looking, looking at pre, uh, pre-snap. Sure. And uh, he's going to make Nathaniel Hackett look like a genius. Because he, he, he's he going to really basically is. be running the offense and calling the really offense. Is. Now, you're bringing in two guys like Randall Cobb, a veteran, obviously, Alan Lazard. Alan Lazard. Who's called the, the more whole, the whole Green Bay roster. Basically, yeah. the half of the Why Green don't Bay we roster. just call David Bakhtiari and make him the left tackle? I, by the way, I'm in. You right. want to take Makai Beckton? I'm no, good to make go. It just make uh, it happen. But from yeah. that standpoint, uh, if you were a guy that didn't know the offense, and you've got two now veteran wide receivers next year mm-hmm. who know the cadences, the verbiage of it, uh, would that really be that big a help for you? It's a head or do start. we overplay that? It's a head start, no doubt. Going and going into a training camp or, yeah. or a mini camp and having a, having knowledge of the offense that that you previously played in with Aaron Rodgers and with Nathaniel Hackett. So, so you definitely get a head start, start going into the season. I know your season in New York did not work out great, you and the Jets, but it seems to me like you want them to be bad this year. Am I reading, I am I reading them, the I don't want them to be bad. Yeah. I just keep reiterating that they are not the best team in the AFC East. That's just my belief. You're allowed to have wrong beliefs. Okay, That's then. the beauty of America. <laughs> that being said, I get the sense, Tim and I were talking about this last night, that you really don't want the Jets to be well. Nobody never said that. Why do you I'm keep asking. That putting it out there? I'm that, just that, asking that, that the question. Energy. No, I think the Jets are going to be a very good team. They're going to be the fifth best team in the AFC in the- behind the what? Buffalo Bills, yeah. who will win the AFC East, uh-huh. uh, Kansas City, 
Cincinnati. Ch- Cincinnati and the Chargers. Got it. Baltimore. So you've got us as a low wild card team, but it wouldn't kill you if they didn't make the playoffs. You might even celebrate that. Not That's at what all. I'm it would be an absolute failure if the Jets oh, do not let make me tell the you something. If they don't make the playoffs, the GM and the coach are gone. Absolutely. Peace out. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joe Dunn is out. And uh, and Robert Sala yeah. out. He, because all the pressure is really on him. I think, that, and there's, to be fair, there's more pressure on Sala than Joe Douglas. Joe Douglas can only put the guys together. Right. you got to figure out how to coach him. Right. So Douglas could survive that, but I'm with you. If Robert Sala does not minimum make the playoffs, and I don't even think Ooh. that's enough, they got to win a playoff game too, right. which we haven't done in a decade plus now. I think Robert Sala, you want to talk about, we'll do this later on, of course, coaches on the hot seat. Robert Sala, and it is not an easy schedule. That being said, we went through it twice this year. They're going to go 17 and 0, but it is not going to be easy, Blacks. 17 and 0. And I'm with you on That's that. It, no, it is not going to be, oh, yeah. be easy. Wait till you read this. Yeah, oh, it ain't good. Yeah. I don't know if you guys want to put I, I, the I Jets schedule up there. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. You don't no, do that no, again. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we don't have time. We don't have time. Not today. Not today. Another day. You know what? Another day. Maybe you come back. We do it on a special day. Another day. Fair enough. All right. After the Monday night game with the Bills. I'm so scared about that game. All right. Here's our third. And football. All right, and that is, uh, well, we'll stick, uh, uh, that's Dalvin Cook right there. Oh. Why am I bringing up Dalvin Cook? He hasn't signed with anybody. Oh, I know why. I got to go down this road. I apologize. Weird. Because there's a guy named Woody Johnson. Shocker. He's the owner of the Jets. And I know this is silly and childish. He started following Dalvin Cook on social media. Oh. Now, why would the owner, a multi-billionaire, Start following a dude who's a free agent on social media unless he was going to get that guy. I love Woody Johnson, man. Uh, he he bought me in coming out of a situation, believed yep. in me, and, and bought me into a team and an organization and treated me like I had been there for 10 years. But That's good th- to this, know. this is the only re- reason why I would say that the Jets will be number one in the AFC East. If they can get Dalvin Cook, that's a game changer. Oh, no. Stop dancing. Oh, that's a game changer oh. for the offense. So I will, will go on record and yeah. say that if they land Dalvin Cook, yeah. then it changes the whole complexity of that offense. Now Aaron Rodgers will be even more lethal with Alan Lazard and Randall Cobb, and he just gives them something something that they didn't yeah. ha- haven't had for a long time. And that's time not a knock on Brees Hall, but as Thomas. we've spoken about before, when it comes to that torn ACLs, as much as I know they say Brees yeah. Hall is ahead of schedule, yeah. to be fair to Brees, it is very, very rare. The only guy I've ever seen do it is Adrian Peterson yep, yep. to come back from a torn Playing ACL in less than a year. It's tough. Yeah. And Woody has been known to bring in free agent running backs. He, he bought in um, Le'Veon Bell, Thompson, Le- Thompson, Le- Le'Veon yep. Bell. And Chris Ivory. So, he has bought in some free agent running backs. I tell you what, if Dalvin Cook becomes a Jet, then let's just go for the whole McGill. I'll Uh, say this. If the the New York Jets beat the Buffalo Bills on Monday Night Football, when I come there the next day, I'll wear Aaron Rodgers' jersey. Yeah! No, don't do that. Don't do that. But wait, Timmy, you heard that, didn't you, Timmy? Yes, wait, wait, just That's to make it fair, one. though. I'll wear and an I, Aaron and I tell Rodgers you what, jersey. You wear an Aaron Rodgers jersey, and I'll get stoned. No. Perfect. Great. Right. 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 Perfect. And, and if they lose, uh-huh. yeah. you wear a Josh Allen jersey. That's right. And do I still get to get stoned? Yes. You still get to get stoned. Yes. <laughs> Y'all heard it here first. That's, That's right. a win for me. All right. <laughs> Right. You're going to be stoned. Call Ricky Williams. I need some weed. He has, I got to, put, he has to put on a Josh Allen jersey. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. I will wear a Josh Allen jersey. You'll wear the Allen Rodgers jersey. Either way, we're all getting stoned. <laughs> it's going to be a great Tuesday. Not, wow. Ricky, you know my yeah. address. <laughs> did you know what right. you just did? Yeah, it's, hey, he set go us go up go for a great yeah. Tuesday. He's a great Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> and I already got the munchies. I'm, I'm ready to go. Uh, well, right, by the way, why not just sign DeAndre Hopkins, too? Why not? He's there. Oh, Might as well. Yeah, yeah. Anyhow. He would definitely take a pay cut to go play with Aaron Rodgers and Dalvin Cook. Oh, put it oh, out there. Well. Manifest, manifest. Please. 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 All right, Please. fourth in football. Uh, Kadarius Tony, unfortunately, never lived up to the hype in New York. They did him a favor. They sent him off to Kansas City. He won a Super Bowl in Kansas City. Had a touchdown in the Super Bowl for Kansas City. But for some reason, he hates New York. And he uh, flashed his hatred for New York yesterday. Show me the picture, boys, if you don't mind. Kadarius Tony. And I think we have some sound here, too. I don't like this at all. He'll probably break a hamstring by next Wednesday, so it's all good. Nice. But watch this from Kadarius Tony. Go ahead. 
Great. Isn't it amazing what a quarterback can do to a career? Yes. Because <laughs> when he was here in New York, yep. he couldn't catch a pass in Alaska sitting on the igloo soaking wet with yep. two icicles in his hand. Uh, hold on, let me then see he goes to Kansas City, and, yeah. and, and Patrick Mahomes has him looking like an all-pro wide receiver. He was never a good fit when we drafted him here to the Giants. Right. Way, so I don't know why we took him. Yep. They wanted Jalen Waddle, so they couldn't get him, so they jumped and took Cardarius Tony. He was never a good fit. But congratulations to him. He went down to Kansas City. He's playing with the best quarterback in the world, was able to win a championship, scored in the Super Bowl and all those good things. But listen, listen you, you can't throw shade at the New York Giants because Giants you weren't right able to him. produce. Yeah. Not if just you can't that. catch the football, Brad. then you can't be productive. Not only did he not catch the football, as you know, he barely played for the Giants because his hamstring was always banged up. Obviously, there was a falling out there. Uh, you know, Dable comes in and goes, what's going on? This guy's a bit of a malcontent. And Dable he doesn't was play to put much. him in a position to make plays. Right. He wasn't getting it done. And to be fair, listen, I can doubt it's Tony when he's healthy. Obviously, can be a difference maker. We've seen highlights of him where it's very hard to tackle that guy. And, yes, he won a Super Bowl, and he earned it. He had a touchdown in the Super Bowl. But don't get it twisted. Last year, he had a grand total of 14 catches for the Kansas City Chiefs. It wasn't like he was Art Monk. Right. He didn't show up and have 110 catches 14. and 1,800 yards. Right. He had 14 total receptions for Kansas City. Now, when the kid's healthy and he's on the field, nobody disputes his ability. Right. But he's not had a great NFL career just yet. No, not, not up to this point. And I the mean, Giants 14, did right 14, by the kid. 14 receptions playing with Patrick Mahomes. That's not, that's not going to get it. In it. And, and they're trying to make him the number one receiver. You know, going into this season, yeah. so if I'm Andy Reid and I'm Patrick Mahomes, I'm, I'm trying to get uh, DeAndre Hopkins on the phone. Uh, and I've been saying that for weeks now. Yeah. I don't understand why Kansas City wouldn't go after D-Hop when uh, you don't have a lot of depth if, at wide receiver. If Andy Reid can go after Josh Gordon, he can definitely go after D-Hop. Hey there. Thank you so much for watching The Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1, so check them out too.